By the way, fellas, you might want to check out my friend Ilya Strikalovsky's YouTube channel. He makes videos about some pretty unusual cars, as well as military vehicles, planes and even boats. Right here we have a Lamborghini replica, and here you've got a homebrewed RV. So go ahead and subscribe to his channel and enjoy the awesome content he puts out. I'll leave some links in the description down below. Hey there, fellas. All right. As you can see, I'm sitting behind the wheel of the bus and looking straight at this monstrosity. This, of course, is our new Paz, which is running a diesel engine. Now, in returning to the topic, which everybody keeps reminding us about, and that I'm not against revisiting either, time to induce a runaway diesel situation. So first we have to carefully remove the engine, then we place it onto some kind of frame, and after that, we? We're not gonna have it inside a vehicle, instead it's going to be in the open so that we can access it from any side. And then it's a matter of getting it to run away. Runaway Diesel Part 2 starring the Paz bus engine. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We've placed everything onto a trailer, and now we can easily bring this out or back in, if for whatever reason we need to make a few tweaks here and there. I mean, anything can happen, you know? In any case, we need to prepare. So we went ahead and made an off switch. We'd use the rubber in case the motor were to go a bit... Well, actually, if it were to go completely ballistic. Now, in that situation, the only way we could shut it off would be to cut off the supply of... Oxygen. Okay, so we'll start by blocking off the oil return line on the turbo. The reason is quite simple. The engine, I mean the oil pump, feeds the turbo oil under pressure, right? The journal bearings in there... Let's just say that they've seen better days. There is plenty of oil in the intercooler. So it was already throwing oil. Which sort of speaks to the fact that this unit has seen some mileage. Okay, so we block off the return, and hopefully that journal bearing allows some oil to seep straight into the intake. If it begins to run into the exhaust, we might have to intervene, but at first we'll try to make it run away as is. Let's do this. All right, fellas, we've brought the engine and the trailer outside. Now we make an attempt at... We'll try the following. Now we need it to run away. But if I can reiterate, the turbo is quite the opposite of fresh. There is a lot of oil pooling inside the intercooler. So here's the plan. We fire it up, let it run for a bit, then we block the oil return from the turbo. The journal bearings are already seriously worn, and the pump is going to be pushing oil under pressure. And while that return line is blocked off, here's hoping that the oil makes it into the compressor housing, proceeding to make its way further down into the intake, make the engine burn some oil, in an uncontrollable manner. Now, as the engine continues to run, it'll begin to burn through more and more oil, which is going to result in an increase in revs. In case you don't know, diesels run magnificently on motor oil. All right, let's fire this thing up already.
did install. If it takes enough in, how are we going to switch it off? So here's what happened. I block off the return line. It appears that the intercooler has simply never been cleaned. Must have been an old turbo that filled it with oil which is still in there. I'd imagine it would be a terrible headache to remove this intercooler from the bus. They probably had a look and were like, this is fine, and simply threw on a new turbo. Anyway, so there isn't any oil seeping into either half of the turbocharger. We were wrong to think that it's a goner. It still has some life left in it. There is one thing I'd like to point out to you. Now you saw how we blocked off this intake tube, like fully blocked it, but the engine just kept on running. This could only mean that it's sucking air through the breather, but here's how we can fix the issue. Just pour some diesel fuel into the oil, and that should result in… we'll essentially imitate a leaky high-pressure fuel pump when all of the seals are rooted. The diesel fuel leaks straight into the engine block, contaminates the oil, and uh, the engine then reaches a certain point where it decides that this might be a good time to run away. Now, two things I need to point out. We'll either try imitating a leak through the breather, but another scenario would be when it seeps through the piston rings. Where do you want me to pour it? There it goes. It's happening. Yeah, it's getting there. Come on, let's see some pickup. We're almost there. Block it off. There it is. We're almost there. Block it off. It's not reacting. Not reacting? Block off the breather. Let it sit. That's it. Shut it down! That was sketchy. <laughs> now that, my dear fellows, we got really close to it running away. Here's how it went down. It began to burn oil. 
You're covered in oil? Yep. Hope you're not too upset. I like these pants, man. Oh, looks like it's boned. Yeah, the turbo... The turbo is... That's a damn shame. The turbo is completely shagged. We decided we shouldn't go full blast right here. I mean, the neighbors... I do feel a bit sorry for them. They've been watching this in terror. They run for the hills as soon as things start popping around here. I think it's time for us to bounce. We need to roll it to some other place, where we can do whatever we want, without scaring anybody. Alright, we've made it to this heap, as not to get into anybody's way. Now we just... Go ahead and fire it up. It's almost there. Well, what do you know? It wants some more. Shut it off. The turbo seized. Fellas, here's the situation. Yesterday's attempt to make this diesel run away fell flat on its face. And here's the problem. We actually did a bang-up job. We blocked off the oil drain, the engine started gobbling the oil up and building revs, which it should have kept doing until it couldn't take it anymore. But then something bad happened. So our source of oil was the turbocharger, right? And the damn thing seized up. See? You can't spin the wheel up. They're not moving. So the turbo is no longer doing its thing, it ain't feeding any oil into the motor. Plus we began seeing backfire in the intake, which naturally forced the oil to retreat. So instead of making it into the engine through the intake manifold, it began to make its way out. Now that's a bit… disappointing. What should we do? Now as you might recall, we still have our Lotzilla turbo, which we'll quickly slap on. Then we contemplate what else we can do. We are gonna find a way to feed in some oil, maybe even with a helping of diesel fuel, but not necessarily. In any case, we will destroy this engine. Alright, so we've brought everything outside to do another check, though I should warn you that after we started it out there, it developed a… you'll definitely hear it. We did stick the turbo on, and it does work, but the engine seems to have developed a knock. And not a minor one. Go ahead, fire up this train. You're about to hear what I'm talking about. That's the negative. It's okay for a diesel, I guess. Forgot to install the cap. Okay, we'll let the engine warm up. 
And then we get to the interesting part. And there's your runaway diesel. There we are. What, over so soon? It's still hanging in there. We forgot to put the filler cap back on. See where all that oil is coming from? Fire it up. I'm gonna make a hole. We have a knife. You do? <laughs> and while we were standing there thinking what to do, we forgot to cap the motor again. Yeah, we need to block it off. What are you so scared of? And off it goes. You asked for it. Here's your runaway diesel. We've got a leak up top. See that leak up there? Yes, I do. We need some more. Hold up. <laughs> Thank God that's over. <laughs> Can't see anything over there. <laughs> well, there you have it. Looks like we found a new way of shutting it off. We should have whipped out a CO2 fire extinguisher. Now why didn't you guys go get it, when we were using that powder one? What? Who? It would have started after using a CO2 unit. Fix it. So you want to tear the engine apart? Given it's a diesel, this isn't an ideal situation. A few moments later. No. The fuel pump's loose. See for yourself. It's seized. Yeah, true. All right, fellas, here's what's up. The engine actually did go full runaway. We got lots of smoke and noise, and it was doing that all on its own. You would have seen how the fuel was going in completely uncontrollably. It was screaming in agony. That was a pretty spectacular thing to watch. 
We tried a few methods. We even tried feeding it a bit of snow in an attempt to shut it down. But the way I see it, that entire system just doesn't work. The fire extinguisher was pretty useless. Now, if it were a CO2 extinguisher, now that should have done it for us. Since carbon dioxide isn't a flammable gas, it probably would have curbed the combustion. But that's not for certain, I really don't know, to be honest. We just weren't able to get that CO2 one over here in time to try. Anyway, so where does this leave us then? We tried multiple times to make this work. Hopefully you guys were able to hear and see what was going on. At some point the motor began to really struggle, until it finally seized up from the looks of it. We are trying to fire it back up, but it is really hot. We might be able to get it to run. But at the moment it's seized up due to all of that heat. I should say that for a rod to make a hole in the engine block, my guess is that you'd have to wait until the next holiday season to see that happen. The way that engine is built, if you were to throw one of those rods at somebody, I reckon that'll be the last thing they're ever gonna see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> My point is that the engine is very durable. It very well might have spun a bearing, but I really don't see what else could have happened in there. Anyway, fellas, so getting this sort of engine in working condition to run away is not as simple as it may seem. You might think that doing a bit of drilling and cutting here and there would do it, but as a matter of fact, this requires a bit of work. It took us multiple attempts before we could get some momentum going. But I mean, at least we got somewhere. If you'd like to see us try getting another engine to run away, send one over. We'll happily oblige. Alright, fellas, so we got this to work, and then the engine seized. Good stuff. Alright, you guys watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.